Keep this just in case. The next home cook to try for an apron is one of the youngest in the competition, 21-year-old Eric, a recently graduated chemical engineer. With Asian parents, you have three options, doctor, engineer, or get beaten. I end up being an engineer. This is the one chance I have to escape what I studied for and actually do something I'm passionate about. And what are you making today, Eric? My dish is called This is Ducking Awesome. I'm making a pan seared duck breast on a bed of rice with a, my take on a red Thai curry sauce. You've got five minutes. So tell me, your dad don't want you to be a chef. No. Why? Doesn't see a future in it. And you want to know something? I also have a degree in engineering. Really? Eric, what is your dream? My dream is to open up a restaurant. I just want to get away from like what I was forced to do, be my own man. It seems as if you have this burning desire to do yeah. this. This is a, a big chance for me to actually do that. That duck looks burnt. This is how I usually cook my duck. Plate has to be up. How many times have you cooked rice? <laughs> I don't know, a billion. What's this sauce? Oh, that's a plum sauce. You try that duck. It's got some good flavor to it. What's in the egg roll? Is there a duck inside? Uh, no, there's no duck inside. You put some duck on that, at least you know, there's some connection. Fat, you say it's crispy. Yeah. I tell you, it's burnt. It doesn't taste burnt, I promise you that. Eric. Yes, Chef. I don't like it when people tell me I'm wrong. Eric, you're a smart guy and you have a great story, but it's the food that really spoke to me. So I say yes. Thank you, Chef. Eric, I think you know food, and I think you're a, a pretty decent cook, but I don't think you're ready for it yet. My answer's no. Eric, the chef tells you it's burnt, it's burnt. I understand, Chef. Don't argue, because if you argue, we don't want to teach you. Be humble, learn. You're smart, correct? Yes. yes I'm smart. But if I'm going to give you a yes, I need to see more. Can you give me more? 100%, Chef. Do you know who I am? You're Alvin Lung. You're a chef, you're an engineer, you're living my dream. All right, Eric, it's your turn. Please bring up your dish. It's an Asian banana split, banana tempura, red bean and green tea ice cream, and fresh grated chocolate, because there's no banana split without chocolate. Asian banana split. You have taken all the comfort, the good of banana split, and you have put it into this dish. Red bean, that is comfort to Chinese, because we love red beans. And green tea, that's universal. You have hit it spot on. You too have done an amazing job. I find the red bean one has a little sweetness to it that I expect with a red bean. The tempura batter, it is light and airy, so it really does not hide that banana flavor. I think it's a very innovative and high-reaching dish that you've done very successfully. Eric, I think the dish is very dynamic on many levels. And actually, the ice creams both taste incredible. They're very creamy. The one flaw, though, I wish there was some more fresh fruit on the plate to cut through the richness of the ice cream and the richness of the batter. But overall, I think it's an incredible dish. Thank you, Chef. Come on, Master Chef Canada, boys. Where's the daddy? My wife and kids are everything to me. My four-year-old and my six-year-old are absolutely everything. I'm a better person because of them. When Dad cooks, we judge him. I'm always in competition mode. Even at home, I'm competing. My wife's my high school sweetheart. I've spent more time with her on this earth than without her. And she's a strong supporter. 
I may be a concrete worker, but my passion, my love, and what makes me happiest is cooking. Hello, chefs. What's your name? My name is David. Hi, David. What dish are you going to be cooking for us? Uh, black cod, sable fish, and Dungeness crab potato salad. Wow. So, David, why are you here? I want to have this opportunity to change where I'm, what I'm currently doing. And I'm a concrete contractor, so I do concrete work. I started doing concrete at 17 years old. I made some poor decisions. I actually uh, didn't finish school. I only have a grade 10 education, so when an opportunity like this came up to compete in something that I absolutely love, at my age, I, I signed up. Who inspires you to cook your best? My wife, my little boys, four and five. They're amazing. 30 seconds, what are you putting on now? I smoked an egg. You smoked a hard boiled egg? I, I smoked the yolk. David, Hello, Chef. how are you doing? Very good, thank you. Presentation is terrific, really nice. Good sense of style. Thank you. Where did you learn to cook uh, cod like that? I've been cooking it for some time. Yeah, it's very important to get that skin crispy. It is, yeah. you're absolutely right. David, thank you. Thank you. Your boys, do they like your food? They love my food. Can they eat crab? I'm four and five. You know, I think they're still on carrots. When I eat oysters, I actually hide them because they love eating raw oysters. Oh, God, it's nicely done. Flakes, smoke egg yolk. Yes. This is the miso sauce here. It is miso, sable fish. They love each other. Those are concrete mason hands. Yes, chef. And those hands did this. You think working with concrete is your calling in life? You know, unfortunately, I was young and had no choice. Is this your time to turn it around, you think? This is it. This is validation that I can turn things around. David, you said you made some poor choices. But clearly, getting married and starting a family were not poor choices, were no. they? Can you introduce your family to us, please? OK. Look, there's a lot of capability there, I think. All of us? The presentation, the flavor. It's nicely done. What a beautiful family. Thank you. My wife, Tannis, and this is Nuno. Far end, that's JJ. JJ, how old are you? I'm five. I'm turning six in eight days. Wow. What do you think of your dad's cooking? Is he better with concrete or with pasta? Pasta. Well, let me tell you what I think of what your dad made today. We have tasted a lot of food. It's the best dish I've had so far. Incredible. I've never seen anyone that is a bricklayer or laying cement put food on a plate the way you did it. So elegant. It's a yes for me. Thank you. David. You have a beautiful family, and your food is beautiful. So it's a yes from me as well. Thank you. JJ, can you come on up here and help me with something? You're better dressed than us. <laughs> 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 we think your dad is an excellent cook. And we'd like you to give him something. Do you think you can go down and give him that? Of course, the choice to have a family was the best choice, but this has been the best choice in a long time. David, please bring up your dessert. My dessert is a lemon curd parfait on a graham cracker sponge base with meringue. Are you as surprised as we are that you pulled this off? I wasn't going to give up. Not today. No way. Can't wait to try it.
I really adore all the flavors. The presentation to me is unique. There's so many textures happening here. You have crunchy from the meringue, soft from the mousse. The cake is sensational, flawless. You know, David, I am impressed. You really elevated your wife's lemon dessert here. The star of the show really is this lemon curd because the sharpness and the sweetness, that balances perfectly. This, to me, is heaven in a spoon. The mousse is light and fluffy and delicate. The lemon curd, if that had not made it to the plate, this would not be a successful dessert. It's very well done. Thank you. I guess I kind of fell into being an insurance broker, but food is my passion. It's all I think about all day. I'm here for me and I'm here for my mom. I was raised by a single mother. I can't express to anybody how awesome she is. I've always tried to help her and really I took over the kitchen. Mary's been cooking for me and the whole family since she was about eight years old. I've always kind of done the, the right and responsible things. Mom, that, you're a terrible high fiver, but I love you so much. <laughs> but this is my dream and this is my time. Now it's time to see if Mary can earn three S's and a coveted white apron from the judges. Hi there. Hi. What's your name? My name's Mary. And what are you cooking for us today? Uh, lemon meringue pie. Sounds lovely. You've got a little less than five minutes to get it done. Okay, perfect. Mary, when did you start cooking? I started cooking when I was about four years old. Why did you start so late? <laughs> so late? Actually, I was in a, uh, my family was in a car accident when I was four. Uh, my mom and brother were both seriously injured. I wasn't. My dad passed away in the accident. Sorry to hear that. Thank you. I have an A-type personality, so I always want to be there for people, and it's just kind of how I show them how I care. What do you do for a living? I'm an insurance broker, which uh, helped me when I wrecked my first uh, pie tart back out there. So I had insurance, and I made a second one. What's your culinary dream? I would love to run a catering business. I love sharing my food with people that I care about, and I want people to understand that you can make really good food at home and have a great time while you're making it. I say the same. Yeah. There's my dish. <laughs> well, right off the top, you put together a dish that looks I think absolutely wonderful. Let's have a taste. It's outstanding. Thank you very much. Rich, creamy meringue, the zingy, fresh flavors with the berries, that crunchy texture of the spun sugar, and the crispiness of that pastry. Just a wonderful, wonderful dessert. Thank you. <sighs> For me, a lemon meringue, the hardest part is to make sure that the fill is not lumpy. Let me give it a try. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Smooth as silk. <laughs> Spit of meringue here. <laughs> Got the right consistency. Maybe a little bit more color burnt to, you know, to take a little bit away from the sugar, but this is amazing. Thank you so much. This is beautiful. Thank you very much. This meringue is delicious, but it's very rich. Yes. In order for this to work, the tart needs to be tart. Yes. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Well, Mary, I think we're going to keep this short and sweet. For me, it's a hands down yes. OK. Yes. Oh, my god. OK. <laughs> I'm no fool. When I see talent, I know it. And you have that talent. So it's a yes. Oh, my god. Come up here and okay. grab your apron. Ah! <laughs> I bet you got so many people running at you. Thank you. Oh, my god. We're excited ah! to see what you do next. Okay. You have really earned this. Thank you. So welcome Thank you so to MasterChef Canada. <laughs> Mary, please bring your dessert up. I'm 
made a blueberry financier with some brown butter crumb, some kettle corn for the plate, a blueberry sauce for the bottom, and a buttermilk corn ice cream. All right, let's taste. Little you know, Mary, the sophistication, you know, really appeals to the professional side of me. But that popcorn, you know, I want to dive in like a kid. <laughs> all the flavors, they all come together. I can taste the corn, I can taste the maple syrup, the crunchiness, the different textures. So everything in this plate works. Thank you so much, Chef. Mary, this is truly a lovely little dessert. The actual cake itself has a sort of a humble quality to it, but with your presentation, you've been able to elevate it. The Panancia cake has a little bit of a lemony touch to it. It has a little bit of that cornmeal, which adds a nice little texture crunch to it. Beautiful blueberries in there. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Everything works so well together. The corn ice cream is incredibly intense. I like the way you reinforced the theme of the corn ice cream with popcorn. It feels like a road trip. Going up to your cottage, stopping off, picking up some blueberries, grabbing some corn. Amazing. In fact, I'd love to have it on my menu at my restaurant. I think it's playful, it's intelligent. It's all those things you want in a dessert. Thank you so much. Trevor. I can't believe I made the top three. When I broke that oven, I thought I was done. So what you have before you there is a pan-roasted chicken breast, a cauliflower puree, a carrot done two ways, and a blue cheese Mornay sauce. It's a work of art against all odds. I'm curious, what's your reputation? I think people think I'm sort of a goofball, but I mean, I'm here to play. I'm here to play hard. Flavors are so intelligent, and so well put together. I'm struggling to find an imperfection here, but there's one. You need to use a little bit more sea salt if you have it. Trevor, you got a lot of fancy stuff here. Tell me, who taught you all this? I was trained to cook as a young boy, and I sort of developed this plating technique by watching chefs among your stature on television. This is rich. This is sophisticated, you know? I was not professionally trained either. One of the few self-taught Michelin star chef in this world. And being here in this kitchen is the best opportunity that you will get that I did not get. Thank you, chef. One of you created a dish that stood out a little bit more than the rest. And that home cook is Trevor. Yes. I couldn't be happier getting the very first advantage in this entire competition. Trevor, you are now the cook to beat. Trevor, please describe your dessert. What you have in front of you is a chocolate mint gelato with a Dutch cocoa pizzelli cone and a creme fraiche whip. Let's try this dessert. You know, this dish really resonates with me. The ice cream is obviously a bit hard. It's a bit too frozen. That's a common mistake when you're working with liquid nitrogen. However, having said that, the flavor that you have is divine. Great balance of chocolate and mint, really playful. I love it. Thank you very much. Great flavors, that big, bold, bitter chocolate with fresh poppy mint, which is a perfect combination. You have the balance just right. In the ice cream, I taste a bit of salt, and that's a very good idea. That little bit of salt brings out that chocolate even better. I like it. I like it very much. Thank you, Chef Alan. Remind me of your signature ingredient, Becky. Uh, beetroot. It has a monochromatic look that feels modern. And how did you wish to cook the tenderloin? Medium rare, hopefully. Very nice. The beets, you have respected and elevated their flavors. Seasoned well, but we have a problem here. The problem is that there's one less apron to fight for. This is your express pass to the top 12. 
excited to get a wife. Good job, Becky. Way to go, Becky! I'm the youngest person ever to get a white apron. It's crazy. <laughs> My parents are going to be so proud. Go back. Got a girl. I'm happy to present this dessert, but it's nerve-wracking getting the feedback. Becky, please describe your dessert. My dessert is a fallen apple. It's a apple panna cotta with an apple jelly, a soil, a sable twig, and a sugar leaf. Where's the glaze? I just thought it would be too fake, that red color from food coloring. So I just wasn't comfortable serving it. Nothing wrong with that. If it doesn't belong there, don't put it there. Let's dig in. The flavors are somewhat familiar, yet unique and different. Familiar as far as the panna cotta with the apple jelly within it. The soil has a deep, rich flavor to it that is such a strong anchor to this dish. This is one of the most original desserts I've had anywhere. There's a lot going on, but you can sense what is going on. So nothing is overpowering. And I like the journey you have taken us on with the apple. Wow, Jennifer, I am really intrigued by this, OK? Explain <laughs> how this is shrimp to me. I just really wanted to make it the hero of the dish in every way that I could, and then push it a little further. What you have is the shrimp and corn tart. I toasted the shells of the shrimp. I find it almost like a popcorn-y flavor, so that's why there's popcorn there to bring that out as well. This really is a unique and original dish. Thank you, chef. Very interesting. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Chef. Those judges have a pretty sick poker face. I don't know what they're thinking. You six home cooks were all so fierce that there were actually three dishes that stood out. Wow. And the cooks who made those three dishes were... <sighs> Rajin. Andre. And Jennifer. Yeah! Congratulations, you three. Come and collect your aprons. Woo! I'm proud of my dish, and more than that, I'm proud of myself. Jennifer, please describe your dessert. Tonight, I've made one of my favorite dishes, treat cereal. There's a chocolate soil in the bottom. I've puffed a variety of different rices. I've made some marshmallow meringue. There's a chocolate ganache bed for the sugar-cured egg yolk. And I've tea-smoked milk. This isn't just a dessert. This is an experience. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Jennifer, that first mouthful is a bit of a mystery as to what's in there. The second mouthful, it starts to define each flavor and texture. That subtlety of the smoke of the milk, that rich, complex flavor of the ganache, the texture of the puffed rice, there's something grown up about it. If there was one adjustment, one caveat, mm -hmm. I would like just a little more sweetness but it really is a tremendous dessert. Thank you, Chef. All these sweet cereals that I miss as a kid, the ones I crave, I recognize it all here. So my dream has come true, but in a sophisticated adult way. Oh, thank you, Chef. This dessert is absolute creativity. It's somebody who's really mastered technique, flavor. You can't teach this. This is one of the most original desserts I've ever had. Thank you, Chef. I kind of just wanted to give them some of the sense of wonder I have felt the entire time I was here. I'm just so happy.